the last lesson of the momentum impulse unit is elastic and inelastic collisions. And I would like you to read over all your notes. They do an excellent job of describing the difference between the two. The difference between the two is essentially that in elastic collisions, kinetic energy is conserved. And in inelastic collisions, kinetic energy is not conserved. Now, remember that in all collisions, momentum is conserved. But only in elastic collisions is kinetic energy conserved. And let's just remind ourselves the formula for kinetic energy. Kinetic energy, EK equals 1 half mv squared. So there's the kinetic energy before the collision is the same as the kinetic energy after the collision. Then you have an elastic collision. And as it says in your notes, we're pretty much talking about microscopic or subatomic events. For example, electrons hitting one another. In inelastic collisions, in other words, pretty much everything you experience on a day-to-day -day basis, the collisions are inelastic. So some energy will be lost. Now, we have some examples of where there's only a very small amount of energy lost, but in most collisions, most of the energy is lost. For example, in a traffic accident, you would have all kinds of energy lost to uh, friction, heat, sound, uh, and so on. If two cars hit each other, they don't just bounce off one another and go in the opposite direction at the same velocity. There's usually a lot of damage and unpleasant trees. Okay, but just to remind you that the conservation of momentum is still works for all collisions, whether they're inelastic or elastic. Um, so you can watch some videos and then and then we go right to the example. It's a great example. This is a great physics application of how to calculate well, it, it's a principle of elastic and inelastic collisions, but this is a great way to calculate the speed of a bullet. Like, how would you calculate the speed of a bullet? They move really, really, really fast. Uh, and calculating the speed is not easy. However, this is an ingenious little simple contraption. It's called the ballistic pendulum that enables you to calculate the speed of a bullet. And the principle is quite simple yet ingenious. We take a bullet, we shoot it into a block here. Bullet, shoot it into a block. The bullet will embed itself, since it's a blue bullet, will embed itself in the block. And then and so now you have a combination of the bullet and the block. And what will that do? The velocity of the bullet will give this block some energy. And that energy, because it's attached to this pendulum here, will be converted into kinetic energy. In other words, the block is stationary, the bullet hits it, they, the bullet gets embedded in the block, all of a sudden it gains kinetic energy and that is all converted, that kinetic energy that the bullet and the block have is all converted into potential energy, gravitational potential energy. So we, we have a conservation of energy uh, type scenario here. All the kinetic energy of the bullet and the block is converted into gravitational potential energy, and we can use the conservation of energy to then calculate the speed of the block and the bullet together, because we know the speed of the block and the bullet together at this point right here will be zero, because at this point it's all, it is all gravitational potential energy. Just like any kind of pendulum, in any kind of pendulum, if I have a pendulum and I pull it back, all the gravitational potential energy is converted to kinetic energy at the bottom. When it gets to the bottom, it has no gravitational potential energy, it's all kinetic. In this example with a ballistic pendulum, all the kinetic energy of the block and the bullet together is converted to potential energy. So the first thing we can do we have all the information here, which you can read over. It gives you the mass of the pendulum, the mass of the bullet, and um, and then it gives you the maximum height, right? The height that the uh, this combination, the bullet and the block, uh, was raised to. 
which is very easy for us to measure. It's super easy for us to measure this maximum ID. Super difficult for us to try and measure the velocity of the bullet. So we'll use physics to measure things that are easy and calculate things that are difficult. Okay, so we're going to start with the first step in this problem is a conservation of energy. So step one is the conservation of energy. And, and we could do it like this if you recall physics 20. You'd go the total mechanical energy before equals the mechanical energy after, and therefore the kinetic energy plus the potential energy equals the kinetic energy after plus the potential energy after. But let's remember we're talking about a pendulum situation. In other words, at the bottom, it's all kinetic energy. It has no potential energy. So really, this is zero, EK plus zero. And then when it gets to the top, when it's swung up to the top, it now has no kinetic energy and is all potential energy. So really, it's just an EK equals EP. EK, we know from physics 20, is one half mv squared. And EP, the gravitational potential energy, is mgh. And of course, we should remember this in physics 20. The nice thing here that cancels out is M. And what are we looking for here? Why are we doing this? I guess I should have explained. Why are we doing the conservation of energy? Well, we're doing, using the conservation of energy to calculate the velocity of this whole contraption. Right As soon as the bullet embeds itself in there, we want what its velocity is, because if we know the velocity of the whole thing, then we can use the conservation of momentum to calculate the velocity of the bullet. So our goal here is calculate what the velocity of this pendulum bullet combination is first, then use the conservation of momentum to calculate the velocity of the bullet. So what are we calculating here? What are we solving for? We're solving for velocity. And if we solve this for velocity, we multiply both sides by 2, multiply by 2, and then take the square root. And so we get the velocity equals the square root of gh. And what is that the velocity of? Uh, what was that? 0 0.386 meters. It is the velocity of the bullet and the pendulum together. So it's the combined velocity. And that turns out to be 2.75 meters per second. So the bullet, which is moving way faster than 2.75 meters per second, embeds itself into the pendulum. And at that moment of impact, they are given a velocity of 2.75 meters per second. And we're going to use that and the conservation of momentum to then calculate the velocity of the bullet. So step two, step one, we're going to use the conservation of energy. And in step two, we're going to use the conservation of momentum. Momentum. And we consider this, we treat this as a one-dimensional collision, even though theoretically it's not because it swings up. But remember, we're only talking about the speed of the bullet before the collision and then the moment that it embeds itself into the block. So it really is a one-dimensional collision. We really don't care. At this point, we don't care that it's swung up because we've used that information to calculate this value. Now we're going to talk about the conservation of momentum. In other words, here's the bullet. It's zipping along at a ridiculous speed, and it has some value of momentum, right? It's mass times its velocity. We don't know its velocity. We do know its mass. Then it embeds itself into the block, and that starts moving away at 2.75 meters per second. And throughout this whole process, momentum must be conserved because momentum is always conserved. Served. So we're going to go with the momentum before equals the momentum after. It's a one-dimensional collision, so we're going to do the M of the bullet times the V of the bullet, which is what we're solving for. 
plus the M of the pendulum plus the V of the pendulum, which we know is going to be before the bullet collides is going to be zero, equals, now, in addition to this being a one-dimensional collision, we have to ask ourselves, do the objects move, uh, um, do they bounce off each other, or do they stick together? And, of course, the answer is they stick together, and they have a common velocity, and that common velocity is 2.75. So, yes, we, we can write equals the uh, We can do this if we want. Uh, the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet prime plus the mass of the pendulum times the velocity of the pendulum prime. But we know that they, they're combined, so they have one velocity. So we fax out the velocity, and then we add, so that should be a bullet, and then we add the masses. So really, this is V times the mass of the bullet plus the mass of the pendulum. And a conservation of momentum where two objects stick together. OK, the mass of the bullet we know to be 0 0.02 kilograms, and the velocity of the bullet is what we're solving for. Okay, we're talking about this situation right here, the bullet coming towards the, the, the pendulum. The pendulum is stationary. No point even putting any numbers in. It's zero. It has no momentum because it has no velocity. Right here. We'll see that in red, so we to emphasize this, we've calculated the velocity of the combination of the bullet and the pendulum, 2.75. We know the velocity of the bullet. We know the velocity of the pendulum, which turns out to be 5.75. There we go. And then we're left with a fairly simple equation to solve for VB, and expect to get a pretty darn big answer. Right? Bullets don't move at like 10 meters per second. They're moving ridiculously fast. Otherwise, you could dodge them like in the Matrix. Um, add, add these, multiply by that, divide by that. Right. If you need help with that, then come to Pride, or we'll do an individual session on solving for that, and you end up getting a velocity of 794 meters per second, which is pretty reasonable for a bullet. So we're talking about eight football fields in one second. A bullet, uh, this bullet is moving at that rate of speed, which is why you cannot dodge the bullet, as in the Matrix. Okay, so that's um, so that's that conservation of energy, conservation of momentum. Beautiful example. Uh, and then we're going to go to the second example where we take this information and calculate was it an inelastic or elastic collision. And just from your knowledge about inelastic and elastic collision, you're going to know pretty much it's going to be uh, inelastic. In fact, it's going to be very inelastic. When that bullet hits the block, there's going to be an insane amount of friction and heat generated, uh, and some sound, some energy loss through sound. The, the it was going at 794, now all of a sudden it's going at 2.75. There's an incredible loss of velocity, so there's going to be an incredible loss of energy. So we know it's going to be inelastic, but let's just verify that using the principles that we know. And so for it to be an elastic collision, then the kinetic energy before must equal the kinetic energy after. So for this, we'll just do the kinetic energy before which is very easy, because the kinetic energy before, the, only the bullet was moving, and we know from the previous question that it was moving at 794 meters per second. So you're going to square that number, which is going to be a very large number, multiply it by 0 0.02, multiply it by a half, and you are going to get the, the value of 6,304 joules. So that's how much kinetic energy there was before. How much kinetic energy is there after? Right, that's going to be the one again, one half mv squared. But this time we're talking about the combined mass, the combined mass. So 0 0.02 plus 
times the velocity. And look at that. We're multiplying the, the velocity. We're squaring that velocity, but it's so much smaller than the initial velocity. And that's going to give you 28, 21.8 joules. So you can see there's a huge amount of energy loss. This isn't even close to being elastic. Uh, this is clearly an inelastic collision because the kinetic energy before and the kinetic energy after are not the same. And that's the end. That's the end of this lesson. It's the end of this unit. It's the shortest of the units in uh, Physics 30. It is the most Physics 20-like. It's a lot of pretty much all Newtonian physics. And for our second uh, units, we're going to move on to something that's quite different and very interesting. We'll see you for Unit 2.